me next week. Uh, my name is Joe Laban. I will be serving as board chair. Before we begin, Dr. Ghani, would you please take a roll call and any conflicts of interest? Certainly, Mr. Chair. Mr. Leva? Mr. Leva? Can you hear me, buddy? Ms. Wamsley? Here. Any conflicts, Ms. Wamsley? I saw Might have been submitted in writing. Perfect, thank you. Ms. Nair? I'm here and I have no conflicts. Mr. Dang? I'm here, no conflicts, sir. Mr. Dang, thank you for joining uh, the complaint review on short notice, um, substituting it for Mr. Minkus. My pleasure. Um, Mr. Leva, again. Thank you. I have 4H, 4I, and 4AD. Okay, all accounted for, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Consent agenda complaints 4A21 0671. A competitor pharmacy emailed compliance officer Haber stating that CD Pharmacy and its pharmacist in charge, Xing Wang, was offering repackaged, redispensed patient medications filled at other pharmacies. Uh, committee, I'll open it up for conversation. Mr. Chairman, um, as I was reading the narrative, Ms. Wang mentioned that she had a conversation with a board pharmacy representative uh, inquiring whether or not the unused medication can be returned. Do we have any records which pharmacy representative that she spoke to? Mr. Dang, no, we do not. She did not have any name. I asked her multiple times who she spoke to and she said she did not know. Hmm. I asked her if she knew if it was a compliance officer. She did not know who it was. When I look at that one, Mr. Dang, um, regardless of the, what she said on that, that they're accepting drugs back from other pharmacies, that's that in the industry, you have to know. There's pictures that show multiple violations with regard to lot and expiration, and there is a concern of double billing. So my opinion on this one and recommendation would be a conference. I agree. I agree as well. That was where my head was going. I felt like there were still some unanswered questions, and I think there might be some benefit to hear from the permit holder. All right. I will make that my motion at conference. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. 4B21-0681, board staff received a report of claim pursuant ARS 20-1742 from a patient's insurance company due to a patient receiving the incorrect drug. Mr. I didn't see any records whether or not um, the pharmacist provided patient counseling as I was <laughs> reading the narrative. In my opinion, had the patient, had the pharmacist provided uh, counseling to the patient, this particular mistake should have been avoided. Mr. Jang, this was a mail or a pharmacy. Oh, okay. Um, I see this as an error and I would treat it um, similarly to what we have in the past and recommend three hours of CE for the tech and for the pharmacist and accept the CE that's already been done. I'll second. Is um, that non-disciplinary? Yes. And just to be clear, what what's the area of the CE? Error prevention. To be completed within 30 days? Yes, sure, yes. Or is it? We typically have done 90. I was thinking uh, 90 okay, was our it. typical, yeah. Yeah, that, that's fine. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I have a motion and I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 4C21-0502, a pharmacist refused to fill a prescription for ivermectin and was rude, inappropriate, and unprofessional. Like this is a pharmacist making a judgment call on whether something was safe. And my recommendation would be to dismiss. 
I don't think it's appropriate to be rude, but that's a different customer service issue. Um, any other from the complaint committee? I, Ms. Nair, I had the same view on that. I think there was a customer service issue, a perception issue, the way that um, the message was conveyed to the customer. And there's other options once the pharmacist feels uncomfortable not to dismiss. I am sure that the permit holder has gone over that with them and I still feel comfortable with our original direction. I agree. Okay, so I have a motion and I will second the dismissal. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 4D21-0673, incorrect, quantity dispensed, and counseling not documented. I would dismiss this case. Uh, that's where I was going with it as well. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you. I think there was a insurance issue with the limiting the amount versus what the customer wanted. Then when they fix that, that's when a quantity error was made there. That was the type of error. It was corrected. Um, and I'm in favor of the dismissal as well. I have a motion and do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, 4E21-0685, patient's mom alleged that pharmacy incorrectly filled her daughter's prescription resulting in hospitalization. So this is my opinion about this case. I know that um, in the letter, the pharmacist mentioned that um, the pharmacy was understaffed and uh, um, the, the volume was high. I understand that. But in my opinion, when you pres when you fill in prescription for pediatric patients, you just have to take your time, no matter how busy um, or how bad the um, staffing shortages are. The pharmacist had taken two hours of CE, uh, medication safety, a focus on pediatric patients. That's not enough. I think um, given the importance of... Um, pediatric uh, patients and the vulnerability of uh, um, medication errors uh, in this patient population, I would recommend a non-discipline uh, non three hours additional on pediatric um, CE for this particular pharmacist. Okay. So thank you, Mr. Dang. In, in, um, I agree with you on that slowing down and taking another moment to look at the pediatric scripts. I, I did have conference in this one um, and I felt I, I wanted to learn more about why the DUR was overridden. I wanted to learn more about the consultation, et cetera. So that, that was where I was going with it. I do understand what you're saying as well. Um, committee members, other committee members, would you please offer an opinion? Dr. Leva? Yes. Um, I was kind of going the same place as Dr. Dang. I do see that this individual, to Dr. Dang's point, has completed some CE. It looks like they've completed a total of six hours in medication safety. Um, so I was kind of of the opinion that we would do our normal, um, normal CE thought process with three hours of continuing education and allow them to accept it. But I would also be amenable to three, maybe three hours related to patient safety and three hours related to pediatrics. So a total of six hours, they would need to complete one additional hour and, 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 uh, pediatrics. Uh, this one is concerning because there is a child involved in it and there was, um, some, some harm done to the patient as well. Okay. Any other, um, feedback before we entertain a motion? Ms. Wamsley or Dr. Ding, would you please uh, like to make a motion? I would be okay with Ms. Wamsley's um, recommendation. So I'll go ahead and make the motion then. So a total of six hours of um, continuing education, non-disciplinary for the pharmacist um, that did the product review in DUR. Um, I believe that's RW. Um, 
with three hours of it being in medication, medication safety and three hours being in pediatrics, allowing for um, the CEs that have already been completed to be counted towards that to be completed within 90 days. Okay, thank you. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I will second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. 4F21-0678, administration of a vaccine to an ineligible minor patient. My opinion on this one was um, a standard drug error for um, non-disciplinary letter of concern with three hours of CE and immunization honoring what has been done in addition to the biannual requirement due within 90 days. And was that just for Amber Singh or for both? I, I had a note in mine. To the, um, I, in my mind, I was thinking to the final verification pharmacist listener. I believe that was Amber. And that uh, the other pharmacist was not cited for any violations. Other pharmacist was not cited. Mr. Haber, I couldn't hear you. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Just, just to be clear, you said a, a non-disciplinary CE and an advisory letter? Uh, you, can, you can hold on the advisory letter. My apologies. Three hours of CE, non-disciplinary, standard terms. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. 4G21-0662, a, a patient's prescription for leothyronine 5 micrograms was filled with leothyronine 50 micrograms, and the patient consumed it for three months. <clears throat> Um, I, unfortunately, it's just like very similar to other errors, so we should treat it the same, in my opinion. Um, there were a lot of hands that touched this. Um, I would recommend three hours of non-disciplinary CE for, I believe, for every person that was listed. <laughs> um, I don't remember one that was that would be excluded in this case. I think um, you might think about whether the PIC had direct involvement with this or not. And the yeah, no, I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't have the PIC listed. Right, um, or the permit, because there were- Right, no, no, I, each of the people that touched the prescription that were listed below those, um, below the PIC and the permit holder that are listed in the complaint, three hours of non-disciplinary CE and error prevention. One question I have, Ms. Snare, is did the, um, maybe Ms. Dodge can answer this. Did, so there was a data entry, there was a verification. Did the final check pharmacist have any reason to believe that it wasn't 50? And maybe Ms. Dodge could answer that. Um, it, I, and that's where she, she did not think that she had any role in that, but she was the final verification pharmacist and the SOP for that pharmacy specifically um, does go on to explain that, which is why I included it in the packet and listed her under possible uh, violations. Can, can you clarify that for me? The SOP list that list that she had the responsibility to look at the script one more time, or was it just the label and the product in the bottle? It goes on to say that there are times where you should look at the um, actual prescription as well. And because she's the final verification, she would be responsible for that. Um, I guess that would be according to your view of the 402A11, the final accuracy check. Ms. Dodge, do you know on the final verification, does that pharmacist see the script they when can. they go to look at the image? They can. Okay. Okay, Ms. Snare, that answers my questions. You were sound like forming a uh, motion. 
Sure. Okay. So all of the people listed, excluding the permit holder and the pick, three hours of non-disciplinary CE and error prevention due within 90 days beyond what's expected for renewal, license renewal. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Dang. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. 4H21-0656. I am recused. Ms. Wamsley, would you please take over? Yes, Dr. Leba. Um, this was a complaint where an incorrect quantity of medication was dispensed as a compounded product. I see this similar to the previous case where 30 was given versus 60. Um, and my thought was to dismiss. It was more of a customer issue and it was resolved on a customer relations level, I think. I agree. Agree. Someone, nope. Somebody would like to make a motion on this? I'll one? make a motion to dismiss. Do you have a second? Uh, yes, Kevin. I yes. saw your head move. I was reading. Yep. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you, Ms. Wombley. For I 21-0495, I am recused. Thank you, Dr. Leba. Um, this is a complaint. Um, where the pharmacist, what, the pharmacist refused to fill the prescription early. Um, I see this one personally as a judgment call of the pharmacist, and I don't see any violation, so I would be in the um, opinion that we would dismiss. Agreed. I, would, I would second that. That's my thought, too. Do you have a motion? To dismiss. To second. second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. 4J22-0030, a patient filed a complaint stating her insurance was incorrectly billed and that the pharmacist refused to provide his name. I don't see this as a violation that we would handle. Um, I would make a recommendation to dismiss. I have a motion for dismiss. Any discussion <clears throat> or a second? Second. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 4K21-0542. A complaint was received that the DME supplier is selling prescription-only devices and drugs without a prescription. And Mr. Leba, uh, we have someone for this complaint in the boardroom in case you have questions or need clarification. Thank you, Dr. Gandhi. I was going to recommend a conference for the full board to have a discussion. That's exactly right. I where my head was too. Well. Ms. Snare, do I have a motion? Conference is my second. motion. And I have a second by Ms. Wandley. Any other discussion? Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. 4L22-0060, licensee may have failed to disclose an arrest on her license renewal application. And maybe board staff could answer my question that the, the, the word may in there is what I need clarified. The I licensee just, may uh, have I, I know, This is Jennifer. Normally I would just, mm -hmm. I would not put the may, but I, felt in this case, the board should determine that there was actually a violation. So she didn't understand that she had been arrested is the, my, what I gather from what I read. Yeah, I'm not sure she felt that she had to tell us until she was charged and maybe she felt that she was not actually arrested. Gotcha, the term is arrested though, uh, committee members. Mm -hmm. I have in my notes a $250 failure um, with standard terms for not notifying. Second. 
Any discussion? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. 4M21-0639, a verbal prescription order was processed and dispensed to the incorrect patient. My, uh, in my notes, committee members, I have three CEs, standard terms, non-disciplinary. For both of the people listed? Um, yes, because if I recall, the technician was the one who processed the prescription. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I agree. That's what I had as well. Okay. Any other um, discussion? Okay, I will make that my motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 4N21-0474, a pharmacist removed a medication allergy from a hospital patient record. And this is an update um, from a complaint requesting full board review from a previous um, hearing, or not hearing, previous um, case from in front of the board. My thought is that there's justification for why that makes sense. Um, and there was medical reasons for why they chose to give the medication. So to me, it, this warrants a dismissal. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Any other conversation? I agree. I, I, I think our decision was proper. Okay, so um, hearing, hearing no other um, recommendation, um, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to dismiss. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. 4021-0683, notification from the permit holders insurance carrier was received regarding the settlement of a claim for a patient receiving the incorrect, receiving an incorrect immunization. It's my opinion uh, that this would be um, three CEs for the final verification pharmacist and the administrator of the vaccine, um, non-disciplinary in immunizations with standard terms. So in this case, it would just be the technician, correct? Well, the pharmacist is the, the final verification pharmacist as well, because they should be approving that before it's injected. Um, in this one, I had the tech, but I'm trying to remember why. It seems like the pharmacist had done what was needed, but the tech actually gave the wrong thing. Ms. Snare, this is Sharon. Um, Mr. Leba, I can kind of clarify that. Um, Ms. Snare is correct. The pharmacist did do the DUR, verified what was drawn up. Uh, what ended up happening is the tech decided to take three vaccines for three different patients into the room with her and then administered the incorrect one. Thank you, Ms. Richardson. Um, Ms. Snare, I support your um, thought process. Any other Did you discussion? want to finish your, <laughs> yes, your um, recommendation? Um, 3CE and immunization to the technician administering the vaccine, standard terms, non-disciplinary. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 4P22-0056. During a routine inspection, it was discovered that a pharmacist was ordering, administering, and supervising technician administration of immunizations without an immunization certificate. Um, and Ms. Richardson, would you please weigh in on this for me? Thank you. Um, the the um, 
training had been done. I just want to verify the APHA accredited immunization training program or like was accepted. The BLS CPR was accepted. The application was filled out, but it was filled out incorrectly and they were immunizing before they received the actual certificate. And then um, the technician did have all the credentials needed as well. Uh, the technicians were credentialed, that is correct. Um, she said that she had um, applied for her immunization certificate when she first got hired that summer. However, the application that's on date wasn't um, signed until December. Um, she did contact the board during the summer, um, told her that her application would be processed in the order received. And then she um, just began administering them in July um, for whatever reason without having received the license. Um, she was then told in November um, that she didn't yet have a license and the PIC had requested that she stop immuniz immunizing. And she said that she did not start up again until 12-7. Um, however, we have records showing that she was immunizing before 12-7 um, as well. Okay. And there were a total from July to January when she did not have an immunization certificate. She ordered, she was the ordering pharmacist on 1,300 immunizations and she personally administered 1,298 of them herself. And there were no gaps anywhere in there. She had administered that whole entire time. And um, Dr. Ghani, could you comment on this for me, please? That she says that she submitted the application June 3rd and it took to January 5th. What was the reason why we had such a long time frame? Um, and second part would be with all of her credentials in, was is there anything that we had allowed for deviation during the pandemic for uh, trained pharmacists, which she was trained to administer the immunizations. She just was not appropriately credentialed through that application. Sir Leva, let me review real quick. One moment, please. Sir Leva, are we on 4Q22-0027? E. 5-6. 4P22-0027. Oh, thank you. Okay, I got it. Lost, and Mr. Leba, I can tell you that that in initial application that was received was not complete. It wasn't signed. Okay. Um, is what I could view from um, further communications from the board's licensing staff to the applicant. <clears throat> was it clear to her at that time, Ms. Richardson, that she did not have a license? Uh, yes. Yes. Do we know when she submitted the, the updated application with the signature? Uh, that was not till December. December 1st is when we see a signed application, assigned and dated. Would this require a conference since we have so many questions? Because I'm curious about their new hire process as well. I'm with you on that. It, I, I could go with that, but it really doesn't for me. It, you think the facts it, remain I do. The same? And here's the other thing. We're talking about an application not being processed. In the, in the time that we were in, and that's kind of how I'm framing it. The, the training was there, everything was there. Her follow through on the application and completing the application wasn't there. I just wanted those questions answered. I don't have any other. The last one was Dr. Gandhi was going to comment on, did we have anything in play during the pandemic once the training was shown and registered with the board that a pharmacist could begin immunizing? Uh, Mr. Chair, we didn't have anything as far as being uh, authorized to immunize. We had waivers for CPR training if they've had it and they needed to renew it. Uh, so renewal of CPR training was a deviation or an exemption we had for the, for the emergency that we were in. But as far as doing immunization training and notifying the board and filling out the application, there was no uh, waiver for that process. And Mr. Leba, I'll just point out a couple of things. Um, she did indicate that when the PIC told her to cease immunizing on November 29th, that she had quit until December 7th. But from November 29th to December 7th, she ordered 82 and administered 78. So that was not a truthful statement. Um, additionally, she... Um, stated that she sent her documents to the board on December 1st, again, got an automated message 
um, that it would be um, processed and she'd be contacted. Um, she didn't react to, oh, actually she got an email back telling her that it was missing a signed and dated application, but she didn't react to that email because she believed that she had signed it. Um, and she took it upon herself then to contact the board on January 5th. And that's when they told her what the problem was. And then she corrected it and they approved it the same day that she corrected it. So there really wasn't a gap once they received a completed application. Just to start the conversation, I think the pharmacist in charge should receive a non-disciplinary letter of concern for not verifying the credentials of his staff. And then for the staff pharmacist, um, I'm open to recommendations and ideas. I do feel that it is a little bit different um, because of the fact that Ms. Richardson just gave us. Um, I don't know if CE is going to fix this. I don't, I don't think that this is something that CE would fix. And I think this was a lack of follow through and then a lack of following directions after they were given for the pharmacist giving the vaccines. Dr. Leba. Yes. I agree with you. I was kind of leaning towards, um, as you mentioned, a non-disciplinary letter concerned at the pick and um, a, a disciplinary um, letter of concern to the pharmacist. I would also be okay potentially with looking at maybe a fine. Um, I don't know if they're going to learn anything from the fine, but I do think that there needs to be something a little stronger on file for the pharmacists for their lack of follow through. Mm -hmm. I think it's similar to our grid that we already have for practicing without a license. Yeah. Given the fact that uh, almost 1,300 dosages of vaccine were administered, so I think a fine would be appropriate. Practicing without the proper credentials to me would be the same. I think we could follow that grid and use that as a guideline for um, a fine. Mm -hmm. I, don't know, I don't know if I'm comfortable doing that without having get that, that um, you know, you look at every case with its own individual um, merits. And that grid was not made in a case like this, in my opinion. Uh, it was made for a, a pharmacist license. I, I'd be in favor of a disciplinary letter for Madison Stevens and a non-disciplinary letter to, for Ruben Patel for um, the situation at hand. I, I don't think a fine is gonna, I think a disciplinary letter on file for this is um, sending the message. I think it needs to be more strict. I yeah. think that a fine needs to be in place. I just feel like um, knowing what needs to be done and not doing it is different than, yeah. and we do have a fine in place when someone accidentally doesn't renew. So I just think it working without proper credentials is, I see that those two are similar. I do see it a little bit differently than working without a credential at all. Um, this person did also have the uh, appropriate credentials in place. I don't know if they were licensed in a state, not another state, not every state has um, immun a separate immunization license. That is their requirement to know what our laws and rules are to practice. But I don't know that, I think that our typical fine is for working without a license entirely is probably a little too far. Uh, I would recommend for this one that we potentially make a motion to bring it forward to the full board for full board review since it seems like we're kind of split down the middle right now. Yeah, I think, I think that's I think that idea. sounds appropriate. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That would be my motion, full board review. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other conversation? Are you doing full board review on both or are you still making a recommendation for an advisory letter for the pick? I think both we can discuss, oh. that's, that's what, what my thought is. I mean, we may decide that we wanna bring the permit holder in the pick in for a conference. Uh, I think it would be premature to make that decision today. We're gonna to discuss that as a full board next week. I agree. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 4Q22-1, um, I want to table this until we hear the conference at the meeting because this directly impacts um, a conference that we're having and we'll be able to learn more. I don't think it, I think it'd be too premature right now.
to go over each of these when we don't know what's going to be said by the permit holder when they come before us for the same thing. I agree. I was thinking the same thing, but do we need to include this in the conference so this can be part of the discussion? It's just fine. Okay. All right. That's I don't think we can. Can we, Jean? No, you don't have the notice requirements. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, um, we'll uh, recommendation my, um, would be table. to uh, table um, okay. after we hear the conference at the, at the meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 4R2022-03. Board staff received an anonymous complaint that Raven Pharmacy was shipping prescriptions into Arizona without a permit. For this case, I'm leaning towards a uh, conference. I don't know what other members think. Dr. Leiba, I have a question for staff. Do we have an application on file for the pharmacy now? We do. As soon as the as soon there's there's two pharmacies located at the same address. One of them had a permit, one of them didn't. They have a new compliance officer that they had recently put in place. And as soon as I contacted her and explained the situation, she immediately applied for a permit for um, uh, Raven Pharmacy, which was the one that did not have the permit. Uh, apparently, they were shipping into our state on Blue Skies permit, which they say they thought that was okay. It, it seems to me, the, the reason why I wasn't in favor of a conference and I was, I was looking at um, for the permit holder to work with the executive director and the AAG's office to offer consent. Once the consent, consent is accepted, then process the application. The reason is that individual that they hired literally admits to the fact that they did wrong and they're going to do they're going to stop and they are, they're going to move forward correctly. So I don't think that a conference, they're going to debate that in, in learning the reading. I do think they need to, we need to look at the shipping into the state out of compliance. And that's why I offered for the ED and the AAG to work on a consent with the permit holder. Dr. Leib, I agree with you. That's typically how we've handled it. And in the past, I don't think we're going to learn a lot by bringing them in for a conference. So if that's your motion, I'd second it. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. Any other conversation? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 4S22-0040, a pharmacy is offering a kickback to prescribers for sending customers to the pharmacy. I kind of feel like this was just a learning opportunity and it was unintentional. I was sort of leaning towards a dismissal. I agree that it was probably a mistake, but I do think that this is still significant enough that there needs to be something noted in the file. I was toying between the idea of either a letter of concern or a disciplinary letter of concern perhaps a letter of concern would be more appropriate since I don't think that they actually gave any kickbacks. So mm -hmm. there wasn't any actual misconduct other than the, the intent potentially to do so. So I think I a letter of concern the, They even say that they, they respond saying that the savings is meant for the patient, but it's offered to the prescriber's office. So I don't necessarily think that that's accurate. I, I literally in my notes had disciplinary letter of concern or an advisory letter of concern. I could support an advisory letter of concern because no incentive was um, executed. Okay, I agree. I think that's a good compromise. Uh, so I, I would make the rec a motion for um, a non-disciplinary letter of concern. I have a motion, any other conversation? Is that to the permit or the pick? I think both. Both. In this case. Yeah, both. I agree. Great. Because the pick is the owner, right? That's what I understood. That's correct. Okay, so we have a, a motion for a non disciplinary letter of concern to the permit and to the pick. Second. And I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
4T22-0089. Applicant failed to comply with the subpoena. So, if I recall correctly, she's not wanting to practice pharmacy anymore. Can we offer um, her a surrender? She's an, she's an applicant. She doesn't have a license. You could deny. No, oh, deny. Yeah, I, I, from what I read, she doesn't want to work in pharmacy. So, I don't think we should prolong it and just deny the application. Any other conversation? Ms. Nair? Make a motion to deny the application. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Dr. Dang. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? For you, 22-0059, a nurse was discovered in the pharmacy putting away drugs. Upon further investigation, it was determined she was administering immunizations for all vaccines to include pneumococcal Tdap and shingles. In addition, she accessed the pharmacy vaccine from the refrigerator for use, stocks the shelves, places prescriptions in the will call bins, and returns used bottles to the shelves and performs cleaning. Can this be included at in our conference? No, we have to notice them in order to, to okay. do that. Yeah. Then I think them. maybe a conference is appropriate, possibly. I don't know. We, we have more than one of these cases in different locations. And I that's think a, that immunization, immunization in general has been an issue with this company, um, what the rules are and who can do it and under what circumstances. I was in favor of a conference as well. That's my mo that's my motion conference. No, thank you. And I will second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Was there a, an opposed? I didn't. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm clearing my throat. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. 21-0599. Pharmacy failed to comply with CSPMP reporting requirements outlined in ARS 36 dash 2608, pharmacy failed to comply with a board issued subpoena. And I think part of this um, team, and we may need to have a little bit of background, is because that pharmacy closed um, reportedly on August 5th. So after that date, there was no reporting, no communication, et cetera. Dr. Leva? Yes. I have a question for the staff. Did we receive the closing notification that was that's required by law for Arizona? Dr. Gandhi, uh, I believe the answer is no, um, but I'm, I'm not positive on that. I no, didn't we did not, in the we did not receive notice. I was unclear from the reading. Wait, wait. I, would, would it help you guys if I if I tried to help summarize a little bit here? Sure. Uh, you, you know what? Um, it, as we started opening cases for our data submitters that weren't reporting um, on a regular basis, we um, we started by trying to really reach out to these entities and help. Um, and and the more the more phone calls we made and the more emails we sent that it became a little bit of a wild goose chase at times. Um, you know, since this case, we've changed our policy or procedure to just open a case right from the start. But at this time period, what we were doing is trying to find, a, you know, find the, the right people to um, help them and get their data submissions in line. Um, as we made phone calls, um, we, we, we weren't getting anywhere. So then we opened the case and we, um, you know, I think that what, what we ended up learning through the help of another staff member um, was that this pharmacy basically closed in August. 
Um, we learned that through information that was sent by the pharmacy to the Texas board. So when you look at the data submissions that were delinquent, the delinquent data submissions were after, uh, after the August closure. Um, I, I guess the, 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 the challenge here is um, should have our board needed to be chasing down this information by contacting the Texas board to learn that they were closed. They never let our pharmacy, our, our board know that they closed their pharmacy. So um, that's why you kind of see two pieces of this. One piece is, hey, they never responded to the subpoena, but we did learn that they were closed. Therefore their data submissions were up to date at the time of closure. So I hope that helps. If you have questions for me, I'll try my best to answer. Mr. Labo, this is Cam. Just uh, to answer your question, um, they only notified us of the closure after we took that extra measure. They didn't tell us preemptively or it is their responsibility to let us know if they're closing shop and, and they didn't do that. What's the current status of the permit, Cam? While he's looking at that in my notes uh, committee, I have I, I feel like the failure to notify was the root cause and the disciplinary letter for failure to notify. Can you repeat that? Mr. Labor, can you repeat that? Um, while Cam is looking for Lori's question in my notes, I feel like the root cause of this was the failure to notify that they were closed and it should be a disciplinary letter for failure to notify. It, uh, it is on administrative hold at the moment. Have we done a fine for this in the past? I think we have. We have, I believe it was $1,000 to failure to notify the board of closure. I thought it was 250. Was it? Uh, yeah. I remember a thousand, but it could, you could be right, I'm sorry. Committee members. That's kind of where my head was, was a consent agreement for a fine, uh, whether it's 250 or a thousand, 250 is fine with me uh, for failure to notify of the closure. Okay. So this is Jennifer. There's actually um, a separate complaint that's not before you today that addresses the failure to notify of closure. The complaint that you're looking at is specific to um, reporting into the PNC database. So okay. can we take the two together in the future? You can table it, yes, until the other complaint is before you. You can bring them both at the same time and resolve it in one. I, I think that's what I I'm would be in favor, favor of that. Okay, I'll make that my motion. Any other discussion? Second. And I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Or W, a pharmacy operated without a pharmacist in charge for 15 weeks. Um, so hand it over to committee members for uh, discussion. This has been um, a repeat, repeat in my mind. I do know in the pandemic, there's times where that wasn't possible and people do the best that they can. However, we're seeing this more than once now. That's a violation of R20, R4 6, And it's my opinion that there should be a disciplinary letter for operating without a pick to the permit and I'll open it up to discussion. I could support that. I do feel like this is um, slightly different. This is with the same organization that we had a number okay. of complaints with at the last meeting. Um, although I think these were kind of right around the same time frame um, as, as the as the prior cases, but I can support a disciplinary letter of concern for the permit. Any other 15 comments? weeks is a long time too. Yes. It's not like it was just a couple days. Okay, I will make that my motion. So you're gonna be offering a consent agreement for a letter of reprimand? If, if that's how you want to phrase it, we were, I was thinking a disciplinary letter for that yeah, violation, but if you want letter to- of, Letter of reprimand is, is disciplinary. It's essentially a disciplinary letter of concern. And so moved. And what, um, and proceed to hearing if not accepted? Yes. 
have a motion. Do I have a second? That Lori has. Second. That's fine. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 4X21-0686. Two pharmacy staff had children in the pharmacy or in the adjoining room with the door propped open. During the investigation, multiple other violations were discovered. I would recommend dismissal for this case. Dr. Dang, I couldn't quite pick up everything. Could you repeat that for me? I would recommend dismissal for this case. Okay. I, um, I could not support that. I had a little bit different view on that one. I, I was leaning towards a advisory letter, non-disciplinary to the PIC, record keeping for vaccine and confidentiality concern as well. And then to Ms. Lofgren, um, a letter of concern and Anissa Brockman for pharmacy security and having the individuals in the pharmacy. That was a lot to say, but that was what was in my notes and I'll open it up for conversation. So let, just to recap, letter of concern for the PIC and then both of the individuals who allowed their children into the pharmacy? Yes. And the could... PIC on top of that, um, Lori, I had record keeping for the vaccines and the concern for confidentiality. The concern for confidentiality, these things can be fixed. They don't have to happen. And that's why I feel like they should be held responsible for that. Well, in my opinion, I, I just think it's a little bit harsh because um, over the years working at um, uh, as a pharmacist, I've covered quite a few shifts at the retail setting before. And we run into a situation where we have colleagues come by during the off time, bring their kids with them, picking up prescriptions. And obviously the kid's gonna wander around the pharmacy, but only for, not for the whole shift. So that's why I thought perhaps we can have a non-disciplinary letter of concern just to remind the pick that, okay guys, no kids are allowed in the pharmacy. Um, that's just my opinion. Kids, they're young. They're not going to go around and looking for things that pertain to HIPAA violation. So, or, or Kevin, they could open pills and take them, which is a severe concern. Yes, Dr. Dang, if I may interject here, um, there was video of the incident of the child that came into the pharmacy with the intern who came in to pick up her own uh, prescription. She uh, didn't want to wait in line. She walked into the pharmacy with a child that um, I would guess to be about three years old, and I've got quite some experience with children. Um, she held his hand as she walked into the pharmacy and immediately let go of it as she dug through the will call bin for her <laughs> prescription and paid no attention to this child. Walking around the pharmacy um, could have been any pill on the floor. As we all know, we drop pills on the floor. God forbid it was a warfarin or, or something to that effect. I did not see him pick up anything and put it in his mouth. Thank heavens. Um, but And he wasn't back there all but maybe mm, 30 seconds tops. But that's all it takes. That is all it takes. That, that's all I have to say about that. Mm. Well, and I think where we were going, Kevin, is a non-disciplinary letter of concern. So just an advisory letter. So it is non-disciplinary. But I do think it's important that we address it. Um, not only do I have concerns about what might happen to that child, but also the um, disruption that it might cause in the pharmacy and what that could mean for other patient safety as well. Um, I, I think it's pretty common sense not to bring your kid into the pharmacy and let them run around. But um, I'm also not a parent. So uh I, I just, I think that we need to, to make sure that we have, um, you know, something on file so that if this happens again, that they're, um, that we can address it. Okay. Thank you. I will begin to formulate an advisory letter, um, non-disciplinary to the PIC for record keeping of vaccine and the confidentiality, a um, non-disciplinary um, letter of concern to the two pharmacists for the children in the pharmacy that, that where it gets a little tricky, Anissa Brockman, she propped the pharmacy door open and hers was really security because the pharmacy was left open and she was viewing the child from the break room. So maybe I'll rephrase that. Mary Ann Lofgren 
a um, non-disciplinary letter for appropriate personnel in the pharmacy and Anissa Brockman for pharmacy security. I'll second those were, that. Those were all non-disciplinary? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 4Y22-0002, a patient felt her HIPAA rights were violated by the pharmacist shouting her personal information across the pharmacy. I'm leaning towards dismissal again. <laughs> yeah. I agree on this one. Yeah. If that's your motion, I'll second it. I, uh, point of discussion for me, I do think the, again, the will call bins should have been addressed. We've seen this now a total of four times with the same firm. They're not getting the message. It's my opinion that there should be a letter of concern for the will call bins. If a, you know, I, was, I was wondering that too. It, it's not listed in the complaint. Um, it's in, it's listed subject. in the body. It's listed right. In so the it's body. okay to bring that up. Yeah. Um, so, it's what did we do before? I feel like there was a fine when we um, had that violation before. The time no. before, Ms. Snare, was multiple times where it was asked and the compliance officer went out several times. I think this one is a little bit different as the first time. But to me, I, if I get that type of concern, a message is going out to everybody saying, put the appropriate fix in place now. It's easy. Do it now. It's, and it's not, just, not being heard. It just boggles my mind a little bit it, that it is occurring. But what was your recommendation? A letter of concern? A letter of concern to the permit and to the PIC because the PIC could do something about it. I agree at minimum. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 4Z22-0093, dispensing error. I think in this case that um, this is a um, drug substitution error that should have been caught dur during uh, the DUR review. So I would recommend three hours of patient safety CE for both the pharmacist and the insuring tech. Agree. I agree. In, in addition to be completed in within 90 days. Yep. And it was confusing, but for a learning opportunity, the consultation was completed and that's probably what prevented something bad from happening with that consultation. Mm -hmm. Ms. Wamsley, that was your motion? Yes, sir. I thought it was the prescriber that caught it. Prescriber did, but the pharmacist did the consultation appropriately. And if they would have just looked at the label, it would have been different. Ah. Good point. Okay. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. That takes us through the alphabet once. Do we want to have a quick five minute break and reconvene or are we able to push through? Push through. I'm good. There's not that many left. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. For AA21 0348. A complainant requested full board review on a complaint dismissal. The complainant alleged that the pharmacy manager had rewritten pages in the perpetual inventory regarding 10 capsules of pregabalin 100 milligrams. I was a little confused about the time frame. It looks like this happened in 2020 and then it was a year before it was looked into. The way that I'm looking at it, I don't see that the shortage was ever really substantiated and there's no violations with us. So my thought was kind of to dismiss it. I agree it was confusing, but I, I don't see that our compliance officers have been able to substantiate the fact that there's actually been a shortage. The only so Mr. Wagner, please I correct don't... me if I'm wrong. Sorry, Joe. Just, I was going to say, the only thing that I don't like about it is the, everybody agrees and the pharmacy, the PIC agrees that it was sent back to the reverse distributor, but there's no record of it. So there's a record keeping issue right there. 
I mean, and it is a um, controlled substance, I believe. Am I right on that? Yeah. So it was my opinion that we should have a record of it. There's discrepancy. And so a non-disciplinary letter of concern for record keeping to the pick because he was the one that facilitated that return. And it's, it's just nowhere to be found. And that was my opinion. I would just offer that um, when we did look for the record of the return and it wasn't found, he did research with his reverse distributor. They weren't able to find it. He was still under the uh, belief that it was sent back incorrectly as a non-control. And as soon as it was discovered that the documentation was not available, he did uh, submit a DEA 106 for the 10 capsule. Committee members. Did we have a motion for this one? I think there was talk of dismissal, but I don't know if it formed to a uh, motion. I could be wrong. I don't know how I feel. I'm a little torn because I feel like it's an insignificant amount and it was asked about a year later. So it was addressed once it was discovered or once it was substantiated. I'm a little torn on dismissal or um, letter of concern. Can we have the full board vote on this? This has already been reviewed by the board, has it not? Just it has. for clarification, and we voted for dismissal in the past. Yeah, and, and my point with the, it is a controlled substance, so you could say it's only 10, but what if it was 10 oxycodone? It's still a controlled substance. My point with the non-disciplinary letter is that there is just something on file, and if there's ever anything in the future, we will see that there was already one record-keeping incident with the controlled substance and return. And this would be only to the pick because like the permit holder is not yeah. no noticed. Non-disciplinary for record keeping for the pick. I'll make that my motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay. Motion failed. <laughs> I, I'll make, make a motion. motion. Full board review. Oh, yeah. I was going to say to dismiss. <laughs> see if that would carry or not. Okay. So uh, who who made the motion or was it a... <laughs> I'll withdraw. Um, Go ahead. Person. Okay. I make a motion to dismiss. I have a motion to dismiss. Any other discussion? All those in favor? We don't have a second. There wasn't a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Have a second. <laughs> a second. And I have a motion and a second. Who made All the second? You can't second your own motion. <laughs> no, I didn't second it. I, I said, oh, second. yeah, there wasn't a second. Who is Do we have second? a second? <laughs> Lori's second? No. No. Okay, I'm going to make motions was... and second them. <laughs> it's going to be a quick meeting. <laughs> No, I, I don't. I don't think I seconded it. Yeah. No one seconded. Motion fails. Okay. We can move it to the full board. Full board. Okay, full board. Motion That's my motion. For, by Dr. Dang. Full board review. Do I have a second? Second. A second by Ms. Wamsley. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Four A B twenty two dash zero one zero zero. On a routine inspection, several violations were issued, including compounding violations that involved compounding commercial products, using drug products labeled not for human use, in human pres prescription compounds, and improperly storing bulk ingredients. My thought is that for a conference. Yes, second. I have a motion and a second for a conference. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 4AC21-0631, a complainant requested board review of a complaint dismissal. The complainant alleged that a pharmacist shared 
his ivermectin prescription information with an unrelated third-party doctor without his permission. Um, my thought on this is that we don't know exactly the reason. Um, and I can see where the patient was kind of surprised that the primary care was questioned, but I also see that there's many reasons why the far, uh, PCP would be contacted. And my thought was that um, it would be dismissed. That's my recommendation. I agree. I would have done the same thing too, as a pharmacist. Because I think the PCP has the right to know what his or her patients are taking. Also, if you have a question about why yeah. there are so many refills, yeah. why the patient's on the medication, if they're aware they're on the medication, there's a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do I have a motion? Dismiss is my motion. And second. Mr. Dang, did you second? Yes, I did. Sorry. Okay. I have a motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 4AD22-0045, a prescription for septinavir oral suspension was reconstituted with alcohol and not water. Ms. Wamsley, would you please take this one as I'm, I'm recused? Thank you, Dr. Leva. Uh, board members, any discussion on this one? This is really unfortunate. They had them in the same bottle, the same looking, look-alike bottles mm. and right next to each other. I'm glad to hear what they've done to correct that this wouldn't happen again. I'm glad that the patient didn't get any, most importantly. Uh, and it's, I would say it's similar to other errors and that we would treat it similarly with three hours of non-disciplinary CE for the pharmacist that's named in the complaint. Um, also a letter of concern to the PIC, I mean the permit. The PIC that's or my, the permit? What's that? The PIC or the permit? I meant to say permit holder for keeping this lookalikes right next to each other. Is that the decision of the permit holder or is that the decision yeah. of the PIC? I feel like it's more the decision of the PIC. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can I can get behind that. I don't think the PIC is listed though. Their well, name's on the complaint. Their license number isn't published on there, but their name's on the complaint. Oh, and they're, okay, yeah. I, I would like that to be to the PIC, yes. A letter of concern to the PIC and three hours of CE to the pharmacist involved in this. Error prevention? Yes. I, Within 90 days? Yes. This is Jennifer and uh, Jennifer Mitchell, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe the PIC has been um, yeah. noticed of this complaint. Is that correct? That's correct. Then I guess no letter of concern. <laughs> I don't know. Because I, I do agree with you that the permit holder didn't have any say in how they set up the pharmacy necessarily. So my thought is, I agree with you, Kristen, about the three hours of CE to the pharmacist. As for the letter of concern to the PIC, um, I, although the two bottles may look alike, but you can see the green, big green label on the distilled water container. I mean, in reality, we place high-risk medications with non-high-risk medications in our pharmacy in close proximity. It Kevin, just to, just to, Kevin, just as Cam, just to interject, yeah, because the PIC wasn't noticed, we, we can't take action today. Okay. Otherwise, so. Okay. No, that that's fine. Thanks. So I'm glad to hear that they've taken action to correct that, and the three hours CE for the pharmacist is what I recommend. Second. That's fine. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. 4AE22-0016, incorrect quantity of a reconstituted oral suspension dispensed to a patient. Um, was there a question that there was no um, counseling on this one? Officer Costaniella. 
I could not find any documentation of counseling upon during the inspection. I think what was more concerning to me in this was that the pharmacist doesn't do the final water check. The, the pharmacist should be verifying whatever the diluent is going into the reconstitutable medication. And that wasn't done. And just because whatever the reason is, it's it still could have been prevented. And that's important to have the right amount of diluent into a medication. Is my opinion, three CEs for the consultation pharmacist and tech involved in the event with standard terms, non-disciplinary. I'll second. Mm -hmm. There's a motion in a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 4AF22-0025. The pharmacy filled a new pharmacy filled a new transfer prescription for the full remaining quantity and would not issue a refund. Additionally, according to the pharmacist, the technician made an offer and accepted refusal of counsel. The quantity is so high on this. I don't understand just because it said that there were that many remaining on the prescription. I don't understand why that was filled in the first place. Um, and then the tech took the refusal. So I was thinking about three hours of CE for both the people listed in this complaint. Uh, and I, I guess it would be an air prevention even though this one wasn't exactly error prevention, but. Um, where I was. That is error prevention. <laughs> I was thinking a. That's my security. Uh, uh, yeah, letter of concern for the consultation pharmacist. Um, and I could, I easily could do the three hours of CE and preventing drug errors and then three hours for the um, technician involved in pharmacy law because they were the ones that are accepting and releasing the medication at this point um, when the pharmacist should be doing that. The standard terms. Um, that sounded good to me, but do you mind repeating it just so I can get it clear in my head? So a letter of concern for the consultation pharmacist in um, error prevention with standard terms and a three hours of CE for the technician involved in law with standard terms. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry, I, I was confused because I heard letter of concern and CE for the consulting pharmacist. Um, let's, let's do the um, non-disciplinary CE, Jean, that'll clear that up. Okay, non-disciplinary CE um, and error prevention for the consulting pharmacist and three hours non-disciplinary CE for the tech and pharmacy law. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Okay, looking at 4AG22-0047, patient's antibiotic was reconstituted by the pharmacy when was um, was not reconstituted by the pharmacy when dispensed. Committee members. I was thinking a letter of concern maybe for the pharmacist for not counseling. I, I don't recall there being counseling and it would have been caught, I would think, if it was counseled. So for the pharmacist, is that what you said? Yeah. I could either go with a letter of non-disciplinary letter of concern to the pharmacist or with three hours of C. It was kind of between the two. But I don't have a strong opinion either way. Since this is related to pediatric population, I would go with the three hours of CE. Is that your motion? Yes. Okay, I have a motion. Uh, standard terms, Dr. Ding? Standard term, yes, sir. 
Is that an error prevention or med pediatric? Either in med errors or pediatric um, medication errors, general medication errors or pediatric medication errors, either. Okay, I have a motion, a second. Second. Any other conversation? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 4AH22-0033, a complaint was received that the pharmacist was observed counting her tablets in her bare hands and had a prescription bottle near her mouth breathing on it. My recommendation is three hours of CE on medication adulteration. Um, she's technically not compounding, so that's why I can't think of um, something related to compounding. But I, I am not in favor of counting pills with bare hand because we're dealing with hazardous drugs too, potential hazardous drugs out there. So I'm leaning towards some CEs that are related to adulteration. I think that might be difficult to find. My, my thought here was a letter of concern to the pharmacist. I think it's pretty common sense that you shouldn't do that, especially in the middle of a pandemic. Um, I have concern about obviously potential disease transmission and those kinds of things, not knowing everything that we there is to know about COVID these days. Um, I, I think that that was a pretty common sense thing that the pharmacist should have known not to do. So I was kind of leaning towards a letter of concern, non-disciplinary. Ms. Walmsley, this is Sharon. Can I just make a quick comment for the record? Sure. Um, you have um, the pharmacist statement in there um, where she basically acknowledges what the patient said. But um, after the fact, after this was all submitted, I got a second statement from her saying that she actually did use a compounding tray um, and spatula. So at first she didn't say that, she is saying that now. Um, I just wanted to put that on the record that I received a statement from her after this was all submitted. It, it almost with that information, then for us to move on this, we have to have confirmation that she did use a spatula and didn't breathe on it. <laughs> Hearing that I know now. I would not want to ingest something that was in someone else's bare hand. I'm sorry. Got that. But now she's saying she used a spatula and she used a tray. Is that correct, Ms. Richardson? That is what she is saying now. She initially said that she um, offered to wear gloves. Um, so initially she was confirming what the patient said and said that um, she said she apologized. She offered to replace the tablets and um, she offered to wear gloves for her. She said it was a one-time incident and not her usual practice. So that was her initial statement. Um, after writing this up and submitting it, then she sent a second statement saying she did use a counting tray and spatula. Did we do an inspection? Uh, yes, actually an inspection happened to have been done there um, that same day, but uh, that particular pharmacist was not on duty. Uh, in, in order for me to, to dismiss it based on her subject, I need to seek proof of that. So she obviously went back and found proof of it. Can we reach out to the permit holder and ask how she determined that decision based, she changed her decision. If we can find proof that she used a tray, then we, I, I would recommend dismissing it. But until then, what I have in front of me is she used her hand, the patient said it, then she admitted to it, the PIC made a statement that she did it. That would be my motion if that was clear. So my motion would be for the compliance officer to reach out to the permit holder, ask for how that um, Miss uh, Lott came to her decision that she did use a tray, find out what that proof is. And if there is proof of that, dismiss the complaint. If there is not a non-disciplinary letter of concern to the pharmacist. Chairman, I have a question for Ms. Richardson. 
Ms. Richardson, the counting of the medication with bare hand, was all this captured on video? Uh, I do not know. I know that they do have cameras um, at this particular company, so I could certainly have them research that. That would be great because although the pharmacist mentioned that this is a one-time incident, how would I know for sure it's a one-time incident? So maybe we can randomly audit the video footage on the shifts that she worked just to see if she, this kind of pattern also happened uh, during other shifts. I think we have before us a specific point from a specific citizen of Arizona. If we can determine that she did or didn't in this case, we can close it, move forward. The message has been sent. I don't know what we're going to do with the rest of the information except open another complaint. Would it be better to make a recommendation for full board and then at that at the board meeting you can get an update from staff as to what they found out so that way you're not playing contingencies based on the information you can get a full board update and make a decision at that point i think that's I a great suggestion that. yeah uh, i make a motion to uh, have full board review and in the time between now and the meeting have um, Ms. richardson reach out and, and do our good work Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, Cam, JK, do, did I miss anything? Are we good with the items? Any clarification needed? Just, just one question, Mr. Leva. For any consent agreements that were discussed during this, this meeting, if they're not agreed to move it to hearing, I don't know if I heard that in, in all the, there wasn't many, but I don't know if I heard that closing the loop on, on all of them. So I just wanted to. I think that is what we've done in the past. Okay. I agree. Perfect, thank you. Okay, thank you so much everybody for your time and attendance today. Look forward to seeing you at the meeting next week. And this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Thank you.